The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show, and now I am uh, out of town for the uh, next couple of weeks here, but we want to do something special. We want to do a throwback to uh, some old interviews that we were able to uh, pull from the the archives, if you will, and I, I'm hoping you guys will have fun with that today. Riz is with me today. I'm here, and I hope nothing happens between now and uh, next or between taping of this and next Tuesday. That's or, right. Or after yeah, that. nothing important will happen, I'm <clears> sure. <throat> and the night is releasing, I'm sure nothing important or any news is happening one way or another. So, uh, happy election day, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so, per in a perfect, I don't know, uh, but we're going to take you back to March 1st, 2018. My chance to talk to Effie, the Effie, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the proto Effie, if you will, um, I think team, I mentioned in this team Hammerfist got us in, in, in on this um, mm -hmm. and it was an internet champion at the time. I need to listen to him more for interviews. I, I kind of like was iffy on some people recently. Um, but anyways, uh, this was uh, still to this day, one of my favorite interviews I've gotten to conduct. And uh, we're going to come back after this. You're going to listen to it. It's about uh, 30, 40 ish minutes here. And uh, we're going to come back and give a little bit of commentary and our thoughts. Uh, Riz, is there any, any thoughts on this going into this interview? um you know that that you want to share before we get into it i'm just surprised that you didn't take off your shirt sir ah well yeah, it was definitely i mean i might have been tempted now but that was definitely about no, but, 20 yeah. or 30 pounds heavier at the time probably so but I you think, know i i mean i i'm not i still i can take my shirt off in front of yeah, other people not, at the yeah, pool now so fine. yeah yeah it's different so. but i think when we get into this you can see like how advanced this has got, like mm -hmm. how marketing in professional wrestling has gotten. Mm. There's a part where he talks about perfume, like, like, yeah. uh, uh, cross, what was it? Cross, uh, uh, uh crossover pe perfume that, he, that he's generating. Mm -hmm. And he talked about these marketing ideas. And remember, this is before a big gay brunch. This is before a lot of things you see before, um, you know, LBGT representation was what it was across professional wrestling that we get to enjoy today. Um, like it, it was, it was a novel concept, and he deals a lot with like you know going to uh, these podunk towns where you know they're treated a certain way, and, and being able to use that and and actually turn people to be like, oh hey, not so you know these people aren't so bad, you know, kind mm -hmm. of thing. And and you know while being kind of a heel character in some places, still like you know, ha leaving a positive influence, you know, and I thought it was very cool. Those and, and, and talking about, there's a little bit of the business of the business in this. And again, one of my favorite things, again, marketing business. And, and again, just like kind of like what, you know, uh, what, what we kind of see today as, as representation pro wrestling. So let's get into it with Effie from uh, March 1st, 2018. Hey, he is the weapon of SAS destruction and, uh, the corporate sponsored Effie joining us here on the show today. Thank you for joining us. Sir, what a wonderful introduction. Thank you for having me. This uh, is fun. So I want to get into, the, the, like I said, there's there's a, there's so much to get into around Effie. Really, I, I want to go. What is Effie? What you know? What's what, what's the deal with this? You have uh, the most um, in depth website I think I've seen a pro wrestler have in the last five <laughs> years. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But first, we'd like a little bit of icebreaker for those that maybe don't know Effie in general. What is your earliest memory of uh, professional wrestling? Oh, earliest memory of professional wrestling is uh, my dad taking me to see Ric Flair have a title match. I'm going to show my age. This was in 2003. This is there's like video memories before that, but this is the like real early memory. And we had gone earlier that day to one of the Sprint Store signings because I wanted to meet Ric Flair, and uh, he got pulled away from the table, and there was like two people in front of me. Um, and they replaced him with the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. And so I got my Shawn Michaels shirt signed because I won it at the little radio booth while I was there, which was convenient. 
So now I actually have a quilt my mother made with my signed Shawn Michaels shirt on it. And I went that night with my dad and we watched Ric Flair lose to Triple H in Greenville, South Carolina, the World Heavyweight Championship. And I was on the edge of my seat and it was incredible. That's amazing. That's amazing. So so it, it, it's something that kind of captured on you right away, right? Yeah. And I think, um, you know, my one thing I brought up before is there was always this thought in my mind of like, all right, well, I'm this little kid. I'm eating my Funyuns. I'm watching SmackDown. I got UPN because that's the channel that came through. I didn't have cable. And there was never a thought of like, you could actually be a wrestler. You could actually do this. It was just like, man, they must make these dudes in a factory. Um, and they just get pumped out. And that's how it happens. Just watch it. You'll enjoy yourself. So it wasn't until a little later on that I started saying, you know what? I might be able to slip in and do this. Mm-hmm. So and, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead with uh, so so. How did how did you kind of discover like that? This is something that like you can actually get involved in. Here's the real story. This is the true actual story. So I did a lot of drugs. I was drinking a lot. Okay. And I went to an NXT show, and my car wouldn't start. And this guy came up to me, and he said, "I can start your car." And then he handed me an eight by ten. And his name was White Trash Fred. And he said, if you ever want to train, I will train you how to be a wrestler. And I was like, all right, pipe dreams. Well, I took about eight hits of LSD one time, ended up in the hospital, got completely sober and made the phone call because I was bored as hell. I wasn't doing drugs anymore. So Mm -hmm. I called White Trash Fred. And for the next eight months of my life, I drove out about an hour and a half every Sunday. And I learned as much as I could. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to start getting booked because I saw some of the guys that were getting booked and they shouldn't have even been booked. So there's really no excuse not to book me. And I just kind of worked my way in there. Mm-hmm. So it's, if from that, like, you, you know, uh, uh, did the, the Effie kind of persona kind of come out right away or was there kind of a development uh, uh, to where you're at right now? It was kind of a day one thing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like it was, I was 23 at the time. I'm figuring out my own sexuality. I've been this weird, you know, kind of semi closeted, overly sexual person for a long time doing whatever with whoever. And I knew that I could get heel heat immediately, especially at these smaller shows Mm -hmm. by just being this overtly kind of feminine thing. And obviously there's a trend of that previously in independent and mainstream professional wrestling with your gold dust, with your exoticos in Mexico, uh, with your Adrian streets, that sort of thing. But, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to make it to where they couldn't make the assumption Um, I would tell them you can't assume with me, but as I sort of grew into it, um, my personality's kind of just turned into what it is now, which is just a big out of the closet kind of ass, um, Mm -hmm. who's critical of everything, who's way too sassy of everything and who doesn't hesitate to, um, call out some BS when he sees it. So it's sort of, it has layers, man. Effie has layers. I'm like a trifle. Effie is a trifle, mm-hmm. right? There's the surface, which is I'm pissing off rednecks because I'm too gay. Then there's a little lower, which is, uh, oh, you're sponsored by Collar and Elbow and Strong Style because they gave you free shipping on a shirt and a 10% discount code. Well, I'm sponsored by Clorox and Planned Parenthood. So take your sponsorships elsewhere. We're going deeper, right? And then I really am corporate sponsored. I make a lot of money during the day when I'm not wrestling. And I can fund enough of the websites and the merchandising and everything else to build my brand Mm -hmm. to where I am the most marketable because I have the cleanest designs. I have the best websites. I have the best video production. Um, And then even deeper than that, you know, I might have a demonic element to me for people who've seen me live. I'm always trying to lead people maybe to the wrong side of the tracks and um, through joy and happiness and beauty and fun. Uh, they find out that they can have uh, everything they want if they uh, give up their morals. Uh, let's talk about a little bit of like the rea- reactions a bit, and, and I definitely want to get into the merch and everything mm-hmm. too. Um, and so, so you know, obviously, easy to get a reaction here in these uh, you know smaller towns with the rednecks and whatnot. You know, was there a little bit of a worry about that because that can get kind of serious when, especially those small towns like that, where where it's still pretty real to them. Oh yeah, and then you're bringing um, this kind of uh, cultural thing to them too. I kind of took pride in the fact that I could go in there and I could take the heat and there was heat and it Mm -hmm. wasn't heat like, Oh, this is a heel. This is heat. Like get him out of our building kind of heat. Yeah. And I realized, you know, not to sound too inspirational, but I would much rather that hate be coming at me as a six, one, 225 pound white male 
you know, instead of someone else who maybe couldn't defend themselves as well. Mm -hmm. So if you want to call me names in the ring and come at me, not only could I probably shoot, choke you out in a parking lot, but also, you know, I'm going to come back twice as hard with whatever I'm saying to you. And I'm going to leave you more uncomfortable. And people by the end of the show are going to go, man, he really held his own against, you know, whatever was coming his way. Um, I think one of the first times I did it, I told someone, they said something about I was, I was so gay, I couldn't see straight. They were using slurs. And I said, honey, I look way too much like your Google search history to be talking this much trash. <laughs> the room just lost it on this guy. And by the end of my match, he was saying, this is awesome. And you kind of see this switch in people where they're like, oh, maybe maybe I was a little hateful and I didn't give it a chance. And now I'm impressed by what I'm actually seeing. So you've got to shut them up up front and show them you can hang with them. Because the moment you give them that space and that room to have that power over you, they lose it. And hopefully there's people in the audience, too. And I know there are because they've kind of come up to me and said, look, you know, I'm glad you can dish that heat out because I feel a lot more comfortable at a wrestling show if I know that you're hearing what I'm hearing and I'm as offended by it as you are and you're not putting up with it, you're not brushing it off. You're not saying shut up. You're really coming back at him with some knowledge and some facts. And uh, thank God for RuPaul's Drag Race for teaching me how to read these boys. Absolutely. I've had conversations. Uh, we, we, we have some friends of the show have talked about, um, you know, this this this, this uh, culture is not really represented too well in wrestling over the years. And uh, it's been interesting. We're seeing a lot of different, um, you know, guys like you, right, that are that are doing this and being out there at this. Well, and I think there's a few issues with it, and we'll get into this. So yeah, yeah. the first issue is, obviously, as a performer whose sexuality is out there in the open, because it's just who I am at this point. I'm not hiding anything, and I sexually express myself in the ring, and that's fun. Um, you have to ride a fine line between being able to work a match that's worthy of anyone watching and relying too much on gimmicky stuff. And sometimes I like to play with that idea. I did a match with Stevie Fierce uh, out of Chicago, and I said, let's start the match with the joke where I'm on all fours, and I'm saying, come get it. And then let's shoot Greco-Roman wrestle for a few minutes. So they're expecting this to turn into some joke, and it starts out looking like one. And then all of a sudden, we're having a real grappling match. And that's the comedy in itself is the switch. Um, but I see a lot of guys, unfortunately, who they rely a little heavily on, you know, oh, I'm gay. I'm going to do gay things. Yeah. So their whole match is sort of this predictable kind of choreographed like I can't deal with this guy because he's too gay. And on the other side of that, I still see guys going out there you know, doing gimmicks that are effeminate or gay. And these guys have, you know, wives at home and are as straight as an arrow. And that to me you're riding a really kind of a risky line because you've got to be true to yourself or else you're just out there playing a game. Right. Which, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, I've been told by major United States promoters that I was acting too gay at points. And I was like, honey, I am too gay. What do you want me to do about it? You know? So there's that, that idea almost that, uh, these promoters have to make sure they're not bringing in guys who are just, um, exaggerating a problem or a stereotype mm -hmm. and having to defend myself. I'm currently dating a man. If I wasn't dating a man would that, you know, exonerate my sexuality or, you know, do I have to defend the fact that this is real to me or is it something that, you know, they're just, I don't know. They're just having to hold their tongue on because they don't know whether or not it's real. We've come a long way since the days of the Billy and Chucks and Gold Dust, which were, uh, you know, like, for the most part, we think, um, you know, acting the part, right? Yeah. And I mean, Gold Dust, I've said a hundred times, is the anti John Cena for me. So John Cena is, I don't really want to watch his match, but I'd hang out with the dude all day. Mm -hmm. Gold Dust, I love his matches, but I don't want to hang out with that dude because he's sober. I know how sober people are. I'm a sober person. And if I have to hear about the 12 steps in the Lord a hundred freaking times, instead of you just putting on the makeup and doing what you do, I don't want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about like, the merchandising. I'm looking at the website more and more here. I, I, I'm loving uh, looking at some of the videos. We showed a uh, piece of it um, uh, a little bit here and a little bit of your match. Uh, it looks like the dog dog collar match from uh, oh, yeah. Best Wrestling. And there was a little bit of that where you're doing a little of the dances. You're getting ready for it at the beginning, too. Absolutely. Well, here's the thing about the website. So my website currently is www.bfe.com. Once again, we're going to go into layers. Here's the layers. It looks like beefy. I'm a beefy boy. 
right? But if you go to beefy.com, it's just gay porn. <laughs> so don't mistype so, this. <laughs> right? But if you do, oops. Oops. What happened? Oh, you went to it. Now you have to look at it. I'm glad I so, didn't try doing this live on the air to type yeah. this thing in then. Uh, I'm glad we do cue this up in advance because <laughs> I, I, I definitely would have mistyped it. And then the second layer to that is, you know, beefy, but it's BFE. You need to be Effie. You know, I'll admit I portray Effie, but Effie is me, you know? Mm. So if you can be a little more like me, a little more open minded, a little more sexual, a little more uh, out of the box, um, especially with the matches I see, which is the same eight indie spots over and over, I try not to do that. So be Effie instead. Awesome. And then there's also a gallery, I believe, of just nipple pictures. Um, oh, yeah. That's under the Look at Elfie, Effie. I'm sorry. Effie? Yeah, that would be Look at Effie. Yeah. I think there's just close-up shots of my crotch and nipples. Yeah. That's all you need to see. Yep. Yep. There's there's your mouth that says, does this look like a toilet? Um, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was told that was unprofessional, so I freaking kept it because you don't <laughs> tell me how to live my life. <laughs> It's good to be true to the true true to Effie, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, we're, I was poking a little bit through the uh, where are they at? By Effie, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you, this is for real. You have uh, it says uh, Effie perfume, a genderless fragrance from Effie. You ready to get into the details of this? Because this is real life. Here's what happened. This is my third genderless fragrance, oh, and. <laughs> Uh, current PWX and all over the U.S. and Evolve superstar James Drake tried to shade me a little bit and say it was just water in a bottle. I said, honey, you have no idea. So last year, around this time last year, I thought it would be silly to release a fragrance. So I went through the process of figuring out how to make perfume. And I made a scent that would be masculine enough and feminine enough for anyone to wear. And I made two separate versions of it, and I sold 100 bottles in a month. Jeez. I sold a hundred bottles of genderless fragrance in a month. And I told myself, I'll never do it again. I had to learn how to make perfume. I had to learn the oils, learn the scents, do the bottling, do the labeling. And, and John Cena is not making his tap out fragrance, right? Oh, I mean, hell no. <laughs> and neither is Mariah Carey. They bring her a smell and slap her name on it. Yeah. This is real life. And so then I said, you know what? Enough people are asking about it. Let's do it again. I did another 50 bottles. I think I have six left in the car. They were released two weeks ago. So I put them at a higher price because I put more into it this time. I made the bottles nicer. I made the boxing and packaging nicer. Um, I think it smells really good. Um, but it's one of those things for me, if you really want to get into the college course that I'm going to be teaching in 10 years, uh, it's called Retro Future Marketing. So hear me out. You release a limited number of a product, the product obviously being genderless fragrance. Mm -hmm. Certain people buy the product. There are people who are going to buy Effie merchandise no matter what it is. That's a fact. I really love them for it, and I appreciate them stepping up all the time. Now, once that fragrance is sold out, once people have already been talking about the fragrance, once people are posting pictures about the fragrance, the fragrance is already gone. There's no more of it that exists. And when people ask about it at a later time, didn't that guy have his own fragrance? Yeah, he did. Let's talk about it. Now, a year later, post the fragrance, you're still talking about the fragrance and you can't get it, which makes it more desirable, which makes your interest in me more peaked. It's retro future marketing. And I think it's going to work. That's amazing. Actually, it already did work. <laughs> I had to do it again. <laughs> so that it was so it was like a retro, retro, retro future marketing at that point. We're taking it into the layers. We're becoming the trifle. <laughs> exactly. It's wonderful amazing um so uh you, you got the presentation here I, it, again i was watching your video uh it was again the you know kind of your booking video right and you mm -hmm. talked about the effic effi excuse me effication effication it's Effic like convocation but it's an effication you can also use the word effify effify there you go uh, explain to me this concept because i thought this was great because you know it was it was a little bit about like hey maybe you're worried about bringing somebody like me here's why you shouldn't be right exactly well so i look at people's booking emails and booking videos and here's my highlight reel and everybody's vying for the same spots right yeah so the efficacy is something that we started to notice, me and my assistant, Jerome Champagne, who also works for me full-time as a sales manager. Long story short, he's great. He's wonderful. He handles my merchandise, and most of my online media presence goes through him and me. Um, we said, look, here's what's happening. You get booked somewhere, right? And they 
in the instance of fast wrestling, let's take that one. I got a five minute spot with someone who has a checkered pass. So, and that was entrance to entrance, five minute spot opening their first show. Let's do it. So the reaction is really strong. And this happens at a lot of places. They see I'm taking care of my character. I'm coming in professionally. I have good gear. I have good merchandise. I'm easy to talk to. I'm fun to be around and they want to bring me back. So they bring me back probably by the third or fourth booking. I'm high mid card. Um, maybe by the fourth or fifth booking, I'm the main event. It happens. I don't know why exactly it happens. Besides I put a lot of care into what I'm doing. So I'm not showing up. I'm not sloppy. I'm not worried about myself. I'm extremely confident in what I do. If I make mistakes, I own up to them. And um, I'm spending time actually learning and meeting and talking to people where I go into a lot of locker rooms now. Guys are quiet in the corner. Guys that are, guys that are interesting online are really, really boring in person. A lot of these indie hype folks are so boring to talk to. And I think by having – at least an interest in wrestling to where I can express it and talk to people and getting over nerves and being able to connect with audience members level that more than just moves because, you know, you don't want to be the guy who did the move because nobody remembers what the move they, they remember the move. They don't remember the guy is mm -hmm. what you commonly hear. Right. So having that connection, I end up getting brought back and brought back. So what I know is if you're a promotion that takes a risk on bringing me in and you don't have an idea what's going on, or you've heard certain things, I know it's going to pay off for you because I've seen it happen time and time again. I'm going to come in. You can put me with anybody as bland as can be. I'm going to give them an interesting match. I'm going to get them over whether I win or lose, and you're going to do good business off of it. I've seen people come into shows that I've been booked on for the first time who said, we literally only came here for you. And that sounds so cocky to say, but when people are coming up to you, nine or 10 people at a 60 person show, yeah, that's more people through the door just because you put me on the show. Yeah. Now, is 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 somebody you paid five hundred dollars? All right, let's say it's a big big indie name. You paid them five hundred dollars to come in. That's a lot of your budget in town. If we're getting down to the profit and loss statements here, are they saying, "Wow, this indie talent, I have to show up for this," or are they saying, "I already bought a ticket, but I'm glad he's there too"? If the case is, I'm glad I bought a ticket, I was going to come anyway, I'm glad I got to see that person, then you're, as a promoter, you as a promoter just wasted $500. That fan was going to show up anyway. What are you doing to bring in people to your promotion to pay more money to come to your promotion that are not already coming? And people are not realizing that, that a lot of these guys that are big names on the internet, big Twitter names, big indie draws online that are on these big shows, they're not bringing in more people than who were actually going to show up. I think I can bring in more people because I have a diverse fan base. I have people who typically wouldn't even come to wrestling who are just intrigued by the weird videos and stuff I'm doing. And I offer a product that's different than everyone else's. You can say I could fit into a category with maybe, you know, other gay wrestlers or other things like that. But I promise you, you could take off my fishnets. You can take the flashy jackets. You can take everything else away. I'm still going to provide you a very interesting product because I care about what I'm putting out and I'm not repeating myself. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as stand-up comedy. There's a guy who can go do an hour set a hundred nights a week. That's the same hour set. But if you've seen the set, what are you going to come back for in the next month? You've seen everything he does. He does the same thing every time. So constant experimentation with my character and what I'm doing obviously led me to this point and is going to continue to lead me to whatever I become. Was that a mouthful? It, a little bit, but that was that, that was almost a college course in, in marketing yourself right there. So, hey, I'm, I'm trying to get those college uh, college <laughs> courses lined up. I've got some information to spill. There you go. Second, third career already lined up. Um, <laughs> and, and that's really important because I know we, you know, we, we talk a lot with the wrestlers here locally that it's hard to get them to be on a Twitter, Instagram, like even just putting themselves out there on the social media that exists just as them as a wrestler. Right. Um, you know, do you have any advice for, um, new wrestlers that are trying to kind of figure out how to put them out themselves out there like that, like you, in, in a manner like you are? Yeah, I think you really, this sounds, this sounds kind of silly from the outside, but one of the best pieces of business advice I ever got was you are seeing the world through your own eyes. Right. And that's kind of a limitation because you're only seeing what you're seeing. You have to go above yourself and kind of look from the sky and be completely self-aware. I am completely self-aware. 
I know when I need to look goofy. I know when I need to come off as an asshole. I know when I need to do certain things. And being that self-aware, I can make myself the butt of the joke. I can be a serious competitor. I know how to put myself out there because I know my character so well. So if your character is, I'm a badass, you better be a badass. Mm -hmm. If your character is, I'm a high flyer, you better be a high flyer. But as far as an internet presence goes, how is that going to translate? Is it going to be a lot of pun jokes about how you're flying? Is it going to be constant updates about people you're actually beating up in real life because you really are a badass? When you say you're a badass and then I see a cell phone promo of you in front of an apartment complex, you're not a badass. You're a guy who works part-time somewhere standing in front of an apartment complex pretending to be someone. How do you disappear the line between pretending to be someone and having that character come across completely real? And I spend a lot of money on video promotion, but you really don't have to. There are ways with phones now, with video editing programs, with software, with all that kind of stuff that's already in your phone to where it doesn't have to look like crappy cell phone videos. And if you're taking the time to set your lighting, to make sure you're centered, to make sure you're, you've got your camera set up correctly, um, you're going to be able to put that presence out there in a way more professional manner. It's almost like a, a part of the the getting through wrestling school should be a minimal video production, you know, kind of tutorial, right? I think so. Yeah. I did I did an evolve tryout last year, which went. I'll say, for Gabe, it went terribly because he hated me. Uh, for me, it went excellent <laughs> because William Regal shook my hand and told me I was very entertaining. So. But during that time, they do have Stokely Hathaway, who people may be familiar with, kind of giving tips on social media. And I realized when I was sitting there, when I was the only one asking questions about you know, real social media, that people have no clue what they're doing. And people are asking questions along the lines of, how often should I update? All the freaking time is how often you should update. If you don't have anything to say, find something to say. Mm -hmm. If you're not on the forefront of what people are thinking, then... They're not going to be thinking about you at all and promote the shows. Don't just promote the shows by sharing the poster, make the post interesting, do something weird with it. I mean, there's, there's no limitations to how you can promote a show. And if you're talking and doing a promo, don't cut the same promo as everyone else. I joke in the locker room with guys and do the same promo, which is easy. I'm going to do it real quick. <clears throat> this time you've made it personal and you've crossed the line. So at event on date, this Saturday night, you're going to have to step in the ring with me and you're going to have to put your title on the line because people know that once you cross once you cross me, there's no coming back. So name of opponent, you better be completely ready because I'm coming in and I'm ready to kill. Everybody's cut that promo. Every it, single person. It seemed to start as a Triple H impression. Is that is that by accident? Oh, no. Have you been to an independent wrestling show? Everything is a <laughs> yeah, Triple oh, yeah. H impression. That is true. Everybody's trying to be... Everybody puts yeah. their tough guy voice on, which I'm the opposite. I know I'm tough. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with knowing I'm tough. I don't need to come off as tough as my character. When I get in the ring, I can be tough, right? When I snap my lid, I can be tough. But if I'm trying to get a little heel heat, I wouldn't want to come off as tough. Mm -hmm. I would want you to go... This asshole needs to stop talking like this. This dude is talking out of his head. This dude isn't going to get anywhere. There's no way this dude's going to beat anybody. Absolutely. And then I do, you know? Awesome. Well, um, what are you watching these days? Is there anything that you're kind of watching for inspiration or anybody that's kind of caught your attention out there? Um, yeah, I mean, I watch a lot of independent stuff. And I sit behind the scenes on a lot of shows, too. So yeah. I'm just watching stuff. Um, one person who I literally cannot take my eyes off and I will not stop talking about him is a guy named Saif Al Sabah and Saif Al Sabah. If you don't know him, he's been doing some stuff with uh, MLW major league wrestling. Um, this past weekend, I'll give you his travel schedule. He went from, uh, let's see Friday. He was in Dayton, Ohio. He showed up, got to be a part of the rockstar scramble. Uh, Saturday drove back to Miami, Florida was in the Ronin pro wrestling, uh, triple threat. And then Sunday was in Charlotte for PWX. The guy does not stop. And I don't think work, you know, work horsemanship is, is the maker of a competitor. But when you watch this dude work, he is the most charismatic, aware character in wrestling. And he's incredible. I can't stop talking about him. You really, if you need me to spell it, it's uh, S-I-S-A-I-V-E and then a space and then A-L- 
and then a space, and then S A B A H. Thank you. Yeah, I was trying to look them up here, and I was yeah. trying to go to PW. PD, it's PD, PWX it's something you kind of have to just like experience in person because yeah. I've never seen somebody own a room with that much swagger. The guy knows what he's doing, and I will not stop bragging on him because I can't stop like just watching him wrestle. Oh. It's phenomenal. Awesome. So, uh, what is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you? So I will plug, I do have a little series I've been doing that only has three parts so far and it's called talk and shoot with Effie. And I don't know if you've had a chance to watch any of this yeah. yet. Yeah. We've, we've been pulling up a little bit in the background here while you've been chatting. I, uh, I started doing this because people were like, you complain a lot about stuff in indie wrestling. And the reason I complain so much about indie wrestling is because I really, I really love pro wrestling. I love pro wrestling so much, but I hate when people ruin pro wrestling. There's so much stuff, especially with the internet, of people just ruining pro wrestling. I mean, examples I've brought up before are Make-A-Wish merch, which is just like the worst merchandise you've ever seen. Homemade crap. T-shirts that should have never been made. And they're like, well, I sold a few of them. And I'm like, because it's Make-A-Wish merch. They're donating to your little charity. They don't want the actual piece of merchandise. They just want to say they helped you and they helped you along. And really, they probably give you the $15 if they didn't have to take the shirt anyway. Um, another thing I complain about is guys pretending to be AJ Styles. And really, it's a bigger problem of guys just pretending whatever's hot for the week, they're going to do that. So, you know, Ricochet's hot, we're all Ricochet. AJ Styles is hot, we're all AJ Styles. Kevin Steen is hot. Oh, I'm Tubby and I like Kevin Steen. Let me start telling people I work a Kevin Steen style. I hear that all the damn time. Oh, I work more of a Kevin Steen style. Nah, dude, you don't work a Kevin Steen style. You're just Tubby and you want to wear a t-shirt. So, I mean, there's a lot of things I could play about in there. Training videos being posted online. I'm sorry. You know, I break kayfabe a lot. But I don't need to see the moves you and your little bro are practicing all the time. And then this weekend, you're now hated, heated competitors. Oh, cool. And you guys just posted your selfie in the car together. Here we are. We're going to the show together. And you're the opponents that night. People look at that. And it's just trashy. You're sitting there with your opponent. And now you're going to try to convince people, oh, we actually hate each other. We're enemies in this match. But you guys know because it's wrestling. It's just insulting. We know wrestling is predetermined or fictional or fake or whatever you want to call it. But you don't have to rub it in to the fact that, like, me and my bro are out here living our dreams. Yeah, we freaking know it. Go live your dreams. But keep that part off the Internet. Nobody needs to see you botch another Rana. Great. Am I too real? So so that is the best and the worst. (laughs) It's, It's all of it. It's me constantly going. This is trash. I wish it was better. And oh my God, I love this so much. It's like I'm in the, the worst abusive relationship with wrestling possible. Aren't we all? Um, <laughs> so, some more than others. So, tell me, where can people, uh, again, where can people find you online? Uh, and uh, kind of generally, where do you show up in case people uh, check this interview out later on? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I am currently the fast wrestling champion. I just beat Sue Young. So, you can find me at Fest Wrestling. I'm doing. Uh, a lot of Southern dates because I like the South. So I've got PWX coming up in March. I've got Southern Fried Championship Wrestling coming up in March. I'll be in Alabama for the New South Haas Tournament in March. Uh, and then, you know, I'm working a show in a church this Saturday night, DCCW. Because what's better in a church than this big queer boy? <laughs> um, Amazing. So my social media, I'm also really, like, controlling about it. My Twitter is freeform thought all the time. Today I posted a picture of me as dead Billy Graham holding his daughter's hand, but his daughter was a drag queen and I was Billy Graham and it said, daddy is a homo. I don't care on Twitter. I go wild on Twitter and I will go in on some things. Uh, Facebook is a little more, hey, I'm promoting the show. Here's a video. This is fun. Uh, And Instagram is extremely tightly controlled personal information and I make sure I only share what I can there. Instagram and Twitter are kill Effie because everybody's trying to. And Facebook is now just listed under Effie. I think if you do Facebook.com slash Effie Gibbs, it'll still show up. Yes. Uh, but it is listed just as Effie. And then to get to my YouTube, you just go to tinyurl.com slash watch Effie. And that's how you can get to that page. And I'll tell people, if they haven't seen me before, there's no one in wrestling making weirder videos than me than maybe Joey Janela on a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just put out that 8-bit thing. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> Listen, I 
all hail Joey Janela for doing something different because yeah. a lot of people in wrestling can't handle it. And I love it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this was a great conversation. I think hopefully very educational for any of the young guys out so. there. So, and uh, hopefully we see you up here in the Pittsburgh area. I know I'm going to be circling in the video around of the promoters around here and hopefully uh, one of them will bring you up. Dude, thank you. Hopefully sooner rather than later. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me, man. No, thanks a lot, and, and thanks again to Team Hammerfist for uh, for recommending you as a as a guest on the show. Again, we're I'm always also, yeah. I'm, I'm currently the Team Hammerfist Internet Champion. Right now. <laughs> I should probably take that belt out of my car so that I can get some photos made with it. Shout there out to go. Team Hammerfist. Sorry, I have not done photos yet. Well, there you go, and uh, you can tell I, I definitely had much better hair than I don't even. Somebody called me out on my hair choices when they were seeing an old interview that I shared a few weeks ago. One of the DOJ guys were, uh, Department of Jock guys, was like, you made some interesting hair choices. Like, yeah, that's why I grew it out along o over COVID, because I don't know what to do with my hair otherwise. Uh, so anyways, um, so so Riz, you know, I, I, I lived this one. So I, I want to know what your thoughts generally were from this interview, listening to it back. I'm sure you listened to it back when it first happened, because you listened yeah, to what? all of the lore. Uh, all of the lore. Um, but just to see how, like, self-promoting Effie did back in 2018. Mm -hmm. And then to see how most, like, the, the wrestlers that have come up or, or come down mm -hmm. from, like, WWE to in the indies and how they monitored themselves as, or they, 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 they followed in Effie's footsteps, footsteps a bit. Yeah. Cause I, I don't think you have what's going on with Zach Ry or, uh, Matt Cardona. If there was not Effie. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you don't get the Dan Housen If there was not Effie, you don't get, you don't get these mass promotions of like stars in pro wrestling tees. Like if you look up pro wrestling tees and see just, the list of wrestlers that are there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that happens with without Effie. Like you just have that marketing genius that happens where you're just like, I'm just going to make myself out there, put myself out there. If it, if, if, if you, if it works, it works, If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and just like how that snowball effect started Primarily, from primarily with Effie, mm -hmm. and I'm not even getting into like the LGBTQ stuff, but still, in 2018, that was that was kind of like we we may think that was like as I mean, we 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 see that now, and we're like, oh, that's that's like we see that with like on a runway or mm -hmm. or, or 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 like. Like anybody else in the, in the LGBTQ universe, like Sunny Kiss, mm -hmm. uh, Paris Sahara, like you have these people who are in that group that do mention their sexuality, and then also they can kick your ass. Yeah, yeah. No, like they can about they can talk about kicking your ass and kick your ass. There, there, there's actually conversations I've been having with with people that that have come up about like hey, you know. It, 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 it's not enough to just be an identified, you know, gay, you know, persona and things like that. Like, you know, mm -hmm. do you have a character beyond just, oh, hey, and I'm in and this, you know, uh, uh, so like, and, that, and that's really important because that's, you know, you'll get on certain shows just for that fact, but, you know, and, and that's been amongst the community. It's been, there's been a lot of discussion. I, we are not ones to talk about that community. No, but, no, so no, we'll no, have no. It here, somebody on here that wants to talk about those issues with it. Um, but, but it was interesting to see versions of that kind of, um, um, um kind of, represented here uh, a few notes i took while i was listening back to this one first of all i did some follow-up research on this remember you talked about bfe.com um mm -hmm. and don't say beefy.com because that, and i did not research to see what that is today uh but how you said it was a gay porn site if you if you miss an f uh, uh bfe.com is actually um um uh, it, we, he must have let it go at some point is now you can now buy that for ten thousand dollars by the way uh that domain um and beefy.com is a multi-chain yield optimizer. <laughs> really? Even that's changed? I love that. <laughs> I have no idea what that well, means. Well, not what it used to right be, at least. 
Oh, yeah, that's, that just, I don't know what that means. Maybe that's just code for gay porn now. Um, I I love his thing about everyone is a Triple H impression in wrestling. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is I, I had that just, in my notes too, and uh, I was like. We're, we're, we're well. We're recording uh, just after uh, uh, Christian Noir uh, left, and we showed us a promo. I'm just like, that is a very generic wrestling promo. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, it's like this is this is exactly what we talked about in this interview. We I, was, listened to. I think his I think his quote was, "When you're saying you're a badass, and I can see you take a cell phone video mm-hmm. of yourself in front of an apartment built complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not being badass. Yeah, being badass or rich or whatever or outside of McDonald's yeah. or whatever. And it's like you or. have to." And we kind of, and I think Sorg, you and I kind of have talked about this before where it's like, we see that in certain Mm -hmm. wrestlers. Yeah. Where we're like, why aren't you doing more like, yeah. Wait, wait, where where would your character do a promo? Not where you have access to because you work at Eaton Park, you know? Um, I mean, so yeah, the, 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 the one oh, character yeah, that did say, cool. yeah, he works at Eaton Park and that's part of it. I get that. But n- in this case, um, another note here, uh, Effie lives dot com is the is the current is basically kind of just a mm-hmm. T-shirt shop, you know, which I think is what a lot of wrestlers do. Um, I think it's very few wrestlers that are taking a lot of time with the, you know, the, the home page and things like that. You know, you know, PB, you know, our friends, you know, help pretty voice me with their social media and they have a, a link tree and all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, but you know what that is because of hmm. because because you don't you don't really need a website. No, no, we, you don't need you it. Have, still, you have your voice. People are, you have your people voice are doing on social it, media. People are learning how to do it in social media, and that's obviously it developed and again, more in uh, since it. Uh, he mentions like Saeed Al Sabah uh, as somebody who should be signed. Mm-hmm. I looked them up because I, it wasn't I wasn't terribly familiar. I thought I heard of it before. Uh, was signed with MLW in 2020. Uh, Riz mm-hmm. appeared on the Ashe Cosmos show in April of this year. Weren't Is you at we that show? There? Isn't that the show you helped work on? Sounds familiar. So, it says, that, that, let me see if I can get a picture here. Uh, I got his key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Okay, so I, I love you. You cross yeah. paths with this guy this year, so yeah, I have. Uh, so yeah, definitely got around the Indies a bit. You know, obviously didn't. I don't think he popped up in anything bigger that I saw. Um, but uh, it still works with WXW uh, Extreme World Wrestling, which is um, I can't figure where that's based out of at the moment. But uh, so still active. Had some GCW stuff in 2021. Um, but it seems it is down to only a few companies. Looks like he's thinning out his uh his thing. It, might, it could be an injury. Who knows? Uh, in, in that case. So, um, also from this, yeah, that was kind of the biggest stuff I had from this. I mean, it just it's still it was just a. It's still there's like, so, so much stuff in this interview that I think wrestlers should still listen to today and applies. Yes, for representing yeah. yourself. Yep. Like, I think you and he, like, you and Effie had a nice little chat about uh like how wrestling promotions should have some sort of media training, Mm -hmm. some sort of video production training, some sort of training that will help you promote you. So I kind of see that happening a little bit with like some of the stuff we do in like 880 wrestling and and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's happening. Like 2018 isn't, was that was far, far enough where we see it building in stuff that we're doing. And yeah. Sorry. That remind me, I wanted to message a local trainer and say, how can I help you with media and social <laughs> media training? I've been telling myself I've been going to do this for years at this point. And finally, I'm just like, you know what? Let's this this is putting me over the edge. And I message. And so hopefully I'll be helping with that here. Because we did that. We did a session years ago about social media training, probably around this time, honestly, like 2019 ish. I think we did one. And one of them's an AEW. So I think it's worth doing. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll have that discussion here in the future, too. Well, Riz, uh, uh, so first throwback that we've done here. And uh, I guess, what did you learn from Effie in 2018 uh, other than what we've discussed here? What's the biggest takeaway? I learned that, you know, like during that time, Effie, Effie was just finding himself to be what he is now. 
And he mentioned in his in his uh, interview that like he can do a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Like if you want him to be funny, they can be funny. If you want them to do a Gregor Rowan style, Gotch style wrestling, he can. They can. Mm-hmm. If you want them to do like a, uh, a, if you want them to do a death match, he they can. Mm-hmm. They have mm-hmm. like like Effie. Effie is ever evolving. Absolutely. Um, I, I think the biggest thing I learned is how do you figure out as a wrestler talent production person. Uh, how do you become an asset to the promotion that hires you? Mm-hmm. And that gets you the job back, right? To come back. So that's the biggest thing. Well, guys, uh, we'll be back next week. We got another throwback scheduled as well uh, for next week's episode. We'll leave it as a surprise for you, but I can tell you one is a boxer. And actually, I can tell you both people have been in the WWE slash F. It's a double shot if you will. And another one of my favorite interviews that I know I bring up a, a lot when people ask about this. So it's not puppet. It's not puppet. I, we already had a discussion about that <laughs> while we're not doing this one. So we'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron media podcast. Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.